Now let's talk about Richemont, which is a Swiss-based luxury goods company controlled by the Rupert family. Mm -hmm. It has a market cap of 622 billion rand. PE here of 40.6 and a dividend yield of 2.2%. So this is ours, right? And we're looking at it here listed in Joburg because it has an inward listing here because of the historic connection with the Rupert family. Interesting though, I mean, it has done well in recent months because people have been looking at LVMH and saying, well, look, luxury goods sales are strong. But then results came out last week and there was quite a lot of noise in there and the stock price fell 5%. 5% 5 fall is quite significant when it comes to a stock like Richemont. Yeah, but remember six months ago, you know, it was trading at around in the mid 80s yeah. and then it went up to 117. So, you know, if you look at the range in which it's, it's, it's traded, it's not unusual to have a a pullback like this. There just was put the graph back up on uh, just to have a look at where it is right now. You can hardly see the move because we're looking at a five year chart, but it got, as Nestor is saying, to almost 120 and then sunk back in recent and days now to 108. It's 108, 108. Yeah. Or thereabouts. Sorry, Nestor, I interrupted you really. Listen, I think if you go through the, the results, a big disappointment was in watch sales. Now, remember, these guys sell watches you know, north of uh, 10,000 Swiss francs, okay? So more than 120, 130,000. And if you go back over the last five years, I mean, there was a period of time in which people, especially out of China, were buying three and four watches at a time, uh, you know, in, in Dubai or, or, or uh, in It's mighty in extravagant. Europe. Yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a thing called gifting, right? Uh, which you, know, you can draw your own conclusions as to what that was about. Uh, the Chinese government subsequently clamped down significant, significantly on that. But Richmond had prepared itself, you know, in terms of the, 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 the manufacturing of these to be able to, to, to keep up with that sort of demand. Uh, and I think what you're seeing now is a bit of a slowdown in that. They're to buy back a lot of inventory through its wholesale channels. Interestingly enough, they're doing very well on the retail side. So I think, you know, there's a proliferation of these high-end watches. And I don't think that Richmond gets its fair share of, of, of advertising at, at retail level. Um, the idea is to be able to grow their retail segment. So you'll see Mont Blanc shops, for example, that only sell Mont Blanc shops or Cartier shops historically have always sold, sold Cartier products. And the sales growth from those uh, retail outlets have done significantly better than what they're doing out of the wholesale outlet. So they're undergoing that change at the moment. Investing more in their own retail. Give us footprint. a bit of a, a, a sense about our relationship with Richmond. We've long owned it. It's something unique and special in the local market because there isn't anything else like it. So if you've got rands, which lots of us have, then you can't sort of rush off and do international. But have we had a, a high level of conviction? Yeah, and we've at that been very level, have pleased we accumulated? to uh, be long and strong and in the stock all along. So, uh, you know, it's one of the stocks which looks quite good in the portfolio because that move where it was weak was when we were buying them back at in August the 80, last year. At about the 80 Rand I can't level. remember exactly, but we were in the middle there, yeah. I think that's what you were referring to, uh, Nesson. Yeah. Around about 80 Rand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the middle, the middle of 2016. Of so here we go. So the question really is, what is the future of the company? I think the watches are becoming a less important part of the business and the jewelry is becoming more important. So we've mentioned Cartier, which is one of the world's kind of preeminent uh, jewelry brands. And then Von Cleef and Arpels is very important as well. Ultra high value, high margin jewelry also sold through exclusive boutiques in high travel areas. So you'll find them in Dubai, you'll find them in Paris, you'll find them in London, you'll find them in Las Vegas. You don't need you know, to convince me. <laughs> I, I quite like how holding you sound as though you're bombarding me with uh, information sure. around the stock. But you are clearly hot on this one. Well, there's just the question of cash and management. Cash with Richmond, they've now gotten to the point where they have 5.8 billion euros of cash. The sales have been a little bit muted, but it's got a very strong and conservative management team. And then speaking of management teams, a bit of change there. Lots of people leaving the board and others arriving, which is an interesting dynamic. And um, you were talking about Johann Rupert's son? Anton Rupert Jr. So that's, Anton Rupert was Johann Rupert's father who established the group. And then Johann Rupert, the current CEO, executive chairman. Now his son, Anton Rupert Jr. is joining the board. So there's interesting little uh, dynamic. I suppose if you're the controlling family shareholder, you can do what you like. You can do what you like. Are investment teams celebrating Anton Rupert's involvement? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what he, what he does. But they've got quite a... Uh, 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 as Paul says, a, a lot of new guys there, um, you know, and guys from all over the world. And I think a few Chinese uh, guys with 
vast uh, experience in, in luxury goods also joining and they'll be able to add a bit more to it. So hot or not, and I'm going to add to that question whether you should take advantage of any downside momentum. So I've been hot on this for quite a long time and I think the last year, the last two years actually have, have been a little bit disappointing but I don't think that you can look at a business like this, you know, with its uh, uh, moat and, 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 and with its reach throughout the world and make a decision based on what's happened in the last two years. You're going to have to you're gonna, I think I'm going to have to stay hot on it for a while uh, and take advantage of, of any price. I think if the price comes down below sort of 100 or 90, it's a good opportunity to, to accumulate. It's been in this range for quite a long time now. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think that's probably the way to, to, to do it. Take advantage of downside momentum, hot or not, Mr. Yeah, Chairman? I'll remain hot on it. They did increase the dividend slightly, which also tells you that management thinks this is just sort of, you know, oh, mid-cycle we, we, We're never going to turn up our nose at a dividend increase.